he's the winning king. So in, in commemoration of his, 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 his defeat of his enemies, he'll carve a ceremonial stella. How the hell is all of this shit that's in Egypt, not in Mexico? And it's just by coincidence that now they have stellas. Not only do they have pyramids, they got kings buried in pyramids. They have uh, sarcophaguses, which mean, you know, a stone or uh, a uh, ceremonial burial coffin that they put the kings in. They have all these things. Even their writing is hieroglyphs. Okay? So we have many... Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. A lot of this is new. The Olmec head, right here. And what you're looking at right here, you can see the slime in their eyes. See the slime in their eyes? Some of them have slats in their eyes. Okay, this is Anchor Watt. You understand what I'm saying? If y'all here, y'all can Google that in. Anchor Watt, Cambodia. And then the heads will come up, and you'll see the slats in their eyes. But they all got thick lips. These was the, uh, uh, some of the early Africans in Asia, you understand, that had this particular persuasion. It was, it, you know, in different parts of the world, different Africans congregated. We are African, but in many areas we had Africans with the slime eyes, long before the Chinese. Ain't none of them ever had, every phenotype you see on this planet, we was able to produce before any of the red races came along. We produce them right here in our own race. Okay, let me look at this. This, I'm in Hotel the Third. You see the slats in his eyes. Okay, just like you see the West, uh, in, in, in the West, in Cambodia, you also see in Egypt. Who are these people? The, these are the, uh, see the Khoisan in Southern, Southern Africa? You can see the slats in their eyes. Okay, so, I mean, that, that man look like he could be over in Southwest Asia somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So all these phenotypes, all of these phenotypes are African. So you, most people will look at, see a lot of them, they look at that and then they, they automatically, they want to run to Asia. Well, that's some Asian, that's a goddamn lie, that's African. Quit lying, goddamn it. Just want to shoot the Asians so you can talk some shit. So we had to show you right there that, uh, again, see, the carving of this stone like this is only in lands dominated by African people. The European never cut no stone like that. He cannot go nowhere, and so this is where they get the concept of, of Mount Rushmore from. Carving in the stone. When you go down into Ethiopia, when you look at the church, the, uh, the Christian churches that the Ethiopians then carve down in the mountain. When you deal with the, uh, the obelisk at Oxum, the largest single, single monument cut, cut from one piece of stone. Okay? That, that damn uh, technical obelisk at Oxum is almost 5,000 tons. Okay? And they raised it up. The little lowly Italian, it was two of them. The little lowly Italian, when Mussolini attacked Ethiopia during, during World War II, that a lot of people don't like to talk about, and committed genocide, the Italians knocked down one of those offices with their punk ass, and then took it to uh, uh, Italy. And I think they just had a ceremony where they brought it back not too long ago. So I think it may have been back maybe now two years. So what we're looking at, this is Pekai. I went to his, 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 his temple, uh, his pyramid, where he was buried. See, what they like to say is that there's some, some type of difference between the Egyptian pyramids and the, uh, the, the American pyramids, that the American pyramids have temples on top where the, and, and that there was no burials inside of them, that the pyramids was basically in America's used as a uh, ceremonial uh, institutions where they would come out, come on the top of the pyramid, do their rituals and whatnot. The people would be down in the open yard at the bottom. Whereas with the Egyptian pyramids, it was just burial grounds. They buried the king, they buried the queen, and then the, uh, the, the grounds was treated as a burial site. 
but we prove it has been proven wrong that not all American pyramids was just temples, that they did have individuals that was buried down inside of, of the pyramid. And the most famous right here is Pekah. He was buried at Palenka. Uh, now, what area of Mexico, but you can look that up, Palenka. And what you're going to see is that just like all the brothers of the craft, with the main lodge being at Waset in Luxor in Egypt, he has his ceremonial mask. He also has his ceremonial collar, along with many other things that I'm about to show you. Right here, you see Tutankhamen down in his sarcophagus. Pay attention. And then here we go with Pekah down in his sarcophagus. See, listen here, family. See, we got, we, get, we got to quit waiting on the cracker to always okay some shit for us. Okay? That the white man is the enemy. And I mean all of them. Okay? Don't, don't single out your little white grandmammy and your little auntie and shit. And the ones you keep here, you come out here black power all the fucking time, but you go and you, you, you sip, sip hot toddies well, well, Aunt Lulu, a peck of wood that you go and kick it with and pretend like it's all about humanity. You're not African no more. You just a human. That's a bunch of bullshit. All these people are trying to assume power over our people. That's a goddamn fact. Whether they be white, whether they be Mexican. Uh, I just come from out of uh, L.A. on uh, August the 28th. I went straight into their ass. I went straight into the Mexican. You understand? Well, even though I took the trip down there, uh, usually I have my crew, you know, and they couldn't make it, and that's all right. I understood why they couldn't make it. So when they see L.A., they're going to see that as a general, I went there by my fucking self, and I didn't calm not a goddamn word. Not one word. I looked them motherfuckers in their eyes just like I had 30 niggas be, and I did have the, uh, the, uh, the Black Rider Liberation uh, brothers with me. They held me down. There's no doubt about it. But nevertheless, I went in without my Detroit crew, and we still was victorious. So we like fucking Voltron. You know, we can still come apart and kick ass and come back together when we need to. But showing you that this is where they got the concept of the burial and the sarcophagus. Okay, now this right here, if you want to see the uh, burial in the uh, uh, pyramid, like this one is at Sakara, if I'm not mistaken. You can look at uh, uh, Imhotep's pyramid, which they don't like to show a lot of that, because those are the older pyramids, and they just don't want to show you how advanced Egypt was even in the earth. I mean, Egypt came in full-blown. Do you understand? It did not have a development stage. Egypt's uh, language was full-blown at the first, uh, uh, the first king of the first dynasty. They already had all the royal regalia, the, 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 the crowns, uh, uh, the, uh, the different, uh, the mace, the, the white scepter, the different uh, uh, royal uh, staffs that they carry. They had all of that, all, even the, uh, what they call the uh, the, uh, the Aket Khufu, which that's particularly dealing with the boat of Khufu, where each pharaoh had their ceremonial boat that was buried right next to them so that they could go on because you got the earthly now and you had the, uh, the heavenly now. And so the king kept going. He would get in his, his royal boat and he would go off into the celestial now. So in many of the, uh, when you look up in the walls of ancient Egypt, you will see a lot of the, the, the deities, they'll be in the ark, they'll be in the boat, and it'll just be set. That's the celestial now. So you got an earthly now, and you got a celestial now. So just like the sun in its continuation on this cycle, it is born into the world through Mama Nu, and goes back up into the mouth of his mother Nu in the wall, travel 12 hours through her body, representation of night, to be born the next day out of her womb. You can go to Dendorah and see that. But this is showing you the similarities between uh, uh, the old Mayan uh, pyramids 
and the Egyptian pyramid. And like I said, you can find these types like this uh, at Sakaka. Peppy, uh, if I'm not Teddy, uh, Zosia, go to Sakaka and look at those pyramids. This again, looking at the slab uh, of, of granite that's on top of the uh, sarcophagus of Pakal, showing you the metal now that that's there. And this is Pakal, and I, I'm going to show you a better copy of what's on it, because it's nothing but the resurrection of a saw. Okay, this is the sarcophagus. This is one of the earlier uh, artifacts that they found by the, uh, the Old Mac Pyramid. This is the sarcophagus. All of this shit, stellars, pyramids, sarcophaguses. You understand what I'm saying? The different type of ceremonial stances that these peoples is taking. The deities. Come on, family. We got to go back home and see that this is where it started. And so Africa, it, it, we knew a lot of people like to say, all the world is, I mean, come on. Stop all that shit. We're going to deal with this shit in order. We're going to deal with it in, from our land of our origin. We are indigenous to Africa. All other lands we migrated in. So the African is the only person on the planet that can say they original to their land. All other peoples are migrants. All right then. You don't want to deal with that fact. And so again, this is the whole Mexicophagus. Let me go through that. Again, showing you uh, how the Pakal was put down. Just like the, uh, the brothers of the Nile with his, his information, just like you got what they call coffin text, where the brothers put all inside of the coffin, where the brothers carve the sacred metal matter, the sacred writers of our ancestors. That's what that is. That's coffin text. Look it up. Look it up. Coffin text. And so as you see right here, not only the angle in which the... Uh, this is where the uh, staircase where the sarcophagus was brought down, and I'm not for sure if he was buried on this particular one or this one right here. But I can show you the similarities with the Egyptian pyramid. See how it is on the angle? You understand? You got the queen chamber and you have the king chamber right there. And so we must stress that, that the pyramid is not just a, a tomb for a king. It is also a tomb for a queen. Let us keep looking at this very serious. So you see the angle. And so I'm going to show you enough that it ain't no damn coincidence. See, we always looking for a cracker to put a stamp on something. Listen here. The cracker is the devil. The cracker is a liar. And we should have gotten over this. We should not be stumbling over this shit now. We should know this shit is a rule of law. And so we can't take no information from the white man. And if we do, we looking at that shit, we breaking it down. We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight great minds going through it, dissecting, dissecting, dissecting it, getting the bullshit out of it, keeping what we can use for our people. This is a Mexican pyramid. You can see that is a step pyramid, but you can also see the quality of it. Man, come on, family. This is shit is low. We give them credit. We give them credit. Our people came here. They did the best with natural resources and the, 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 uh, the extent of knowledge that they possessed at the time. It wasn't as great in the, during the age of ancient Egypt. Matter of fact, it ain't even fucking close. Okay, just to be real. And so when I, I compare the old Mac civilization because a lot of people have are erone erroneously given the South American civilization some type of high esteem. But when you compare that shit based on the evidence what is left, come on man. This shit is this shit can't even compare to the Nubian pyramid. It's not even cause you can see that these are small down little bricks and shit, man. We talking about the pyramids in Africa was cut with was solid stone. You understand what I'm saying? You got blocks big as that whole goddamn pyramid. And so right here, you see the first step pyramid on the planet. See, the thing is about the South American pyramid, they have no development stage. When you look at the very first one, it's a large megalith. When you go to the Olmec pyramid, it's a, a large megalith. You ain't no, you ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna get big first. You got to develop. 
Okay, the big, the, the big uh, superstructure is the end result of all of the trial and error. Is the end result of all of the trial and error, the development that you would go through to get through that point. We can show you the development, Africa. But this is the first stone structure on the planet Earth. And it was put there by the multi-genius, one of the greatest Africans that ever lived on the planet, the master architect. The, f the first grand master of the crowd for Patah, the great M Hotel who built for the Zosia, uh, the Sultan, Pharaoh Zosia, and, and uh, what is this, the third dynasty, 2668-2649 BCE. See, you don't do this shit like this in the third dynasty family. They had already developed that knowledge many thousand year of years before dynastic Egypt. You got to understand that dynastic Egypt, black power. Black power. Dynastic Egypt began around 4100 BCE, but Egypt was already there. It just, it just not. It just didn't form into the nation yet. It was just small counties. They were well advanced. They many of them had writing. They already had the knowledge of government. They already had the knowledge of divine kingship. They all already had uh, deities, what you call gods, in many of these uh, different areas of Africa. But then here come Nama, the first king or sultan of Egypt. And he takes control of the whole land and he forwards all of these groups into one nation. And this is the first documented goddamn nation on the planet outside of Nubia, which is right up the river from Egypt. They have documented now that Nubia is, um, I mean, like we waiting on the peckerwood. We already knew the shit, but you know, sometimes we wait on the white man to come with his little fake ass documentation. And he ain't seen shit. The white man just crawled off out the goddamn uh, cave two days ago and two goddamn days from going back in. And so we looking right here again, the, the, uh, the, nah, this is a master box. So when we talking about the development, we can show the goddamn development in Africa. You cannot show the development of the pyramid in the Americas. When you go to the old Mac pyramid at, uh, in, at, at Veracruz, the oldest pyramid in the Americas is a megalith. And you're not going to start with no goddamn megalith. You always have to develop knowledge. So if it appears in America as a megalith, the first time the pyramid uh, appears in um, the Americas is a megalith, they brought the knowledge from some goddamn where else because they had to develop it. And so we could go right here to Africa and Egypt and show you the master box. This is what the kings was in before Imhotep built the step pyramid. All he did was stack them. That's what he did. But this is the development thing. This is what you call a master box. And just like in the pyramid, they still had the, the, uh, the route that led down here where they buried the king. Okay then. Okay then. And so here we go. The evolution of the master box into the step pyramid. This is the master box. Imhotep comes along Okay, Master Bob as a single story oblong royal tomb. Okay, Imhotep comes, he stacks three on top. Okay, he extends the Master Bob. He wants to do something that has never been done for his king or any king prior to Zosia. And so, this is his great vision that he's bringing forth. And he stacked it and made the world's first skyscraper. That's still standing today. So when you run up in your Bible and you come with all these goddamn mythologies, we don't need no goddamn mythologies about our greatness. We have enough artifacts that can de detest the, uh, the, the great history of African people. We don't need no more mythologies. The evidence is overwhelming. All we have to do is look to Africa, but too many of our peoples are spoken, family. Too many of our peoples are spoken. And so I'm hitting hard on all type of bullshit. I know a lot of people say, Seti, why are uh, you always uh, fighting against these different religions? Let me tell you something, family. Let me be real. 
I done cleared a lot of these motherfuckers out of here. Mm -hmm. The battles that we done went on in the last yes, three years, them bitches have lost that battle. Yes, sir. Whether it be 5%, whether it be Nation of Islam, yes, whether it be the Moor Science Temple, at the end of the day, every fucking city we went into, it was G's and Revolutionary Queens. Ain't one of them goddamn cities that wasn't packed, we went in. And they can, you know, they writing all type of books. You understand? I see one, five percent. He got a book out uh, called The Goddess Complex. These motherfuckers writing books trying to refute me. I'm generating energy for all of these weak ass niggas. That's right. All of them. Wesley run right in there, do another book, <laughs> and come put it at my spot. Them just being real. So he can sell his little shit. Because he knows a lot of people gonna come out here. And I ain't mad at it. I want the black man to eat. Wesley, Wesley who? Wesley Williams, excuse me. I ain't called that man name in a long time. I don't even know why you made me call him nigga weak ass name. <laughs> you know I ain't give nobody no goddamn advertisement. Okay then, look at this. Let's leave that alone. The step pyramid. And so you can see the Africans are not moving to perfection. They're filling the steps in. Okay? And so when we deal with the pyramid, a lot of people say pyramid are all over the planet. Where at? I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Because when you're dealing with mathematics, in which we trying to be as precise as possible, my eye, order, balance, and also preciseness. You understand what I'm saying? We got to be on point. Only in Africa do pyramids come to a point. Matter of fact, that's what a pyramid is if you look it up from a, 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 a geometrical standpoint. A pyramid come to a point. Okay then. So when you go around the world and you're talking about all of these pyramids, show me where they at. Because none of them come to a point. Or only in Africa. And so right here at the Imhotep built the step pyramid, you can see uh, this is the pyramid of Maidun. Huni, which is the father of Seneferu. Huni, which is the grandfather of Khufu, who built the largest pyramid at uh, uh, Giza. Huni, the great grandfather of Khafra, who built the second largest pyramid of Giza. Huni, the father of Seneferu, the father of Khufu. Okay? So you see this bloodline right here. And so, Seneferu supposedly came and did some touch-ups on it, but he never finished it. So what I'm doing is what I'm showing you is the development of the pyramid. Okay? So ain't no motherfuckers say no aliens came down here and built shit. Because we can see the development. That's right. All right, then. Okay. And so, I threw this in. This is... The entrance into Pakal's pyramid as you go down. If you get, uh, if you Google uh, the pyramid of Khufu, you can go in there and see also descending and ascending chamber. So the architect uh, texture is so much similar that it's without any doubt. It's just like if you go to architecture school now, you ain't gonna learn. Everybody is learning basically the same basis of architecture, but some people put their own spin on it, okay? Okay, don't think, you know, all of these architects is going to the basic primary architect schools that's located on the planet. It's just that when they get back to their land, they usually take their own cultural expression and wrap it on the knowledge. But the basic knowledge is the same. And that the Africans, are the, when you look at, even when you look at the Valley of the Kings, and you see how they, they, they descend down into them tombs, that's the same God that we done that. We the one that laid the foundation for that research. No other people. Okay, keep it much. I'll come back to that. I'm going to add that. That's showing you a sarcophagus. Or the, now, nah, I'm going to get this. I'm just throwing these in here, and at a, a later date, you're going to see how what I'm trying to bring to you, where a division will become a lot clearer. When I act, if you remember Asar, when, when I showed you when his phallus was erect and he was raising up, you understand, he was all black and he was raising up. He, he was raising up from his dead level to the living perpendicular. He had resurrected. 
And so this is what you see right here with Pekal. Because Pekal also died and went into the underworld for three days to resurrect again. And you can look, uh, go get the uh, 16 crucified saviors in which, I think that, what's that, Percy Gray? He deals with Pekal. He deals with Pekal as one of those saviors that resurrected, that died and resurrected to live again. It's a song over again. Okay. Bring it in. Okay. And so this is the Omec calendar. And here you see the origin of, of that. To speak. You understand what I'm saying? What, what it said, like a tongue, that like a two-edged sword. Huh? When you speak wisdom and you speak knowledge, this is what this is. And I can show you where this 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 representation of best went all over the world. All over the world. Went into the islands of Asia, went to Australia, New Zealand, went to India, went to Sumeria, went up into Europe, went to the Americas. Okay? Egypt dominated the world. And people got to quit letting you, uh, uh, let, uh, you got to quit letting these people tell you about the scope of African history. Egypt ran this goddamn globe. And it was no part that it controlled the seas. Because it was the first to, to um, uh, measure la latitude and longitude where the cracker in the 1600s was still talking about you float off the side of the goddamn earth. You cannot go to him looking for no type of direction because you're not going to get it. They had all of them crackers, especially during slavery. Let's listen, family. A lot of them uh, uh, captains was black. Okay. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with that. A lot of this shit that, that went on in slavery, a lot of our people did have a hand in it. But the Arab had come into Africa a thousand years prior. So it was already a raped land. And you had niggas black as mud that would wrap their heads up like an Arab and they would do the bidding of the Arab. Yes, and so what they don't say is, they'll say, oh, African, so African, but they won't say that they were Islamized blacks. That's right. All right, then. Okay? Go get the uh, secret relationship between blacks and Jews. Okay? When the, when the, when the crackers, or the Christians, uh, M, uh, Ferdinand, Isabella, when they pushed the Moors out of Spain, they also expelled the Jew. Okay? So when you go get that book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, it shows that after they were put out of Spain, the Jew went into slavery. That's what, that's what the book documents. But the more was their partner in Spain. That's why they put them both out. Okay then. So if the document over there said that the Jews went into slavery, what did the Moors do? Hmm. Motherfuckers don't want to deal with that. I'm a beast, dog. Straight up. I'm a beast. You can get any motherfucker from any religion or organization anywhere and bring them motherfuckers in front of me and I'll cook their ass. Now he can get up here and preach! But when it comes to putting these goddamn facts up here and showing the people, you ain't gonna have that part of the, uh, the program. Okay? You won't get that. You'll get a motherfucker to hype you up and there's a lot of motherfuckers know how our people's is. They have studied our people. That's a technique in brainwash. If you find where you can eat, you know you find where you can easily get in, they like to hoop and holler. You hoop and holler. They like for you to work their spirit up. Work their spirit up. Say what they like. Tell them about how they're going to overcome. That the Lord told the preacher, God damn it, personally, that y'all was going to overcome next Thursday. Geek them up. Always, and then say, well, God pushed it back, God damn it, some more, because we, you know, we, we, we didn't get this extra learning and shit we should have got last Wednesday. You understand what I'm saying? Always pushing it back. God damn it, nine, uh, 1999 now is 2012. And after that, it's going to be another goddamn date and another goddamn date. After 2012, you know what it's going to look like? It's going to look like uh, 2010. God damn it, or worse, if you don't do nothing about it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now, I just threw that in there. Because I'm going to blow the bigger picture up so you can see 
that this is a West African bed right here. You understand what I'm saying? And this is the bed of the postiche of the of Pharaoh. You can see it was braided. Okay? Yes, sir. It was braided. And so we don't want no crap.